interest in uh, the information that we have available for you. Uh, over the past few weeks, North Dakota law enforcement officers have been working tirelessly, investing extra time and resources and facing challenging conditions as they respond to increased activity resulting from the Dakota Access Pipeline protest south of Mandan. They have done an outstanding job ensuring the safety of workers, protesters, and the general public. Since the very beginning, public safety has been our top priority, and our law enforcement officers have worked hard to ensure everyone's safety while also preserving people's right to protest in a peaceful and lawful manner. I'd like to thank all of the law enforcement officers who have put in very long days and weeks and have put their lives on hold to respond to increased public safety demands. Colonel Mike Gerhardt and the North Dakota Highway Patrol have done a remarkable job ensuring the safety of the protesters and the traveling public. Morton County Sheriff Kyle Kirchmeyer and the Morton County Sheriff's Department have consistently gone above and beyond to address the increased activity and protect those they serve. Al Dorman and the North Dakota Department of Emergency Services staff have been instrumental in assisting with operations and logistics, and several other state agencies have been assisting in the response effort. I would also like to thank the sheriffs, deputies, police chiefs, and other law enforcement professionals from other communities and counties across the state that have also provided valuable resources for this effort. And thanks especially to all those manning the Emergency Operations Center in Mandan. You have consistently demonstrated your professionalism, ex ex expertise, and dedication to public safety. And for that, I sincerely Thank you. For public safety, the North Dakota Highway Patrol and the Morton County Sheriff's Department are enhancing their law enforcement presence over the coming weekend. Plans are underway for additional officers in the Bismarck Mandan area and enhanced patrols in rural Morton, Morton County. They will also be receiving support from other sheriff's departments the state. Because of the increased and prolonged need for law enforcement resources, I have asked General Dorman to make available some North Dakota National Guard personnel to support law enforcement and augment their public safety efforts. The Guard members will serve in administrative capacities and assist in providing security at traffic points. Beginning today, the traffic control point on 1806 will be converted to a traffic information point, advising motorists of potential hazards, but not requiring a detour. With the National Guard helping in, their, in these support roles, we can free up more officers for enhanced patrols and calls for assistance. I have also placed additional guardsmen on standby alert in the event they are needed to assist with response efforts. The Guard members will provide valuable personnel, resources, and equipment necessary to support local, tribal, and state officials. Public safety has always been and continues to be paramount. We are also committed to protecting the constitutional rights of those who want to assemble peacefully and lawful. At the same time, we must make sure that peace is maintained this weekend. The steps we are outlining for you today are being taken out of an abundance of caution. We simply want to make sure we are prepared. I encourage everyone who demonstrates against the Dakota Access Pipeline project to do so in a respectful and lawful way. Resist any pressure from others to violate the law and tarnish your message. I also
also encourage all North Dakotans to respect the rights of others. We all have a right to have our voices heard. That's what makes this country as great as it is today. But in doing so, we must also ensure the safety of our citizens and uphold the rule of law. I'll now turn it over to Colonel Mike Gerhardt to discuss in more detail the Highway Patrol's plans for enhanced enforcement. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to start off by saying we are thankful of the actions of the Governor's Office allowing for additional resources for North Dakota expect law enforcement services to be available on a moment's notice. Having additional resources available from the National Guard allows our officers to better serve the citizens and allows them to concentrate, and allows us to concentrate on public safety efforts. These public safety efforts include responding to calls for service, proactive traffic enforcement, and a visible presence on our roadways. These additional resources will provide the assistance needed to have adequate law enforcement presence to address any traffic safety or other security issues that may arise over the coming days. We continue to maintain open lines of communication with tribal leaders. We all have the same goal of coming to a peaceful resolution. Thank you, and I'd like to turn it over now to General L. Borman. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I don't have a lot to add to what the governor uh, already highlighted. Uh, one thing I do want to stress, though, is a couple days ago, uh, we were here and we had a press conference talking about the situation at that time. And I share with everyone that uh, over the last two weeks, uh, we've been in discussions uh, with leaders from the camp down there and leaders from uh, the Standing Rock tribe. Uh, and the one thing that the leadership down there that keeps talking about peaceful, prayerful uh, protest uh, that they share with us is public safety. Uh, public safety for the folks that live in rural Morton County, for the protesters that are at that site that want to protest lawfully and exercise their First Amendment rights, and those on Standing Rock that want to maintain public safety. That is our number one goal. And what we're doing here today, uh, by bringing some guardsmen in, to help out on the checkpoint so that law enforcement can do what they do best and that's get out there on the roads to promote public safety and be there when needed when citizens whether you live in rural morton county or whether you're passing through because you're at the camp down south public safety is priority number one the guards model is always ready always there and right now if we can come in and help out in a non-law enforcement function to free up officers to promote public safety we see that as a win. And this has been part of the discussions we've been having, as I said, with both uh, the leaders of the camp down there and the leaders from Standing Rock. Uh, the other thing, I've already received a couple of emails this morning um, saying, oh, we've heard the guard is heading south. The guard is not heading south. The guard's role here is to promote, like everyone else, public safety and to help out with law enforcement so we can free up officers with patrol cars to go down there and have a visible presence for the citizens of North Dakota and those that are visiting us and down in those camps today. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the sheriff um, and then answer any questions you might have after that. <coughs> sheriff? Thank you. Yeah, at, at this point, uh, I want to uh, assure the people of uh, Morton County that uh, law enforcement is present at all the, the protest sites. Uh, please be aware that I have requested and received law enforcement assistance from agencies from across the state. We are increasing our patrols as we speak. Uh, we will and we'll make sure that we can do everything to make sure the people of uh, this county are protected. Uh, unlawful acts that are taking place during the protests, protests are being dealt with uh, through the court system and we are investigating the illegal acts and formalizing of criminal charges. Uh, law enforcement has done everything we can do not to escalate the situation uh, with the protests, but our hands are being forced at this point uh, by unlawful acts and aggression actions taken by uh, protesters uh, within the, the protest groups. Uh, we 
have respected the right to the protest uh, to exercise their First Amendment rights. Uh, this week, we've had numerous instances in Morton County where residents are being intimidated, harassed, and in some cases outright threatened. <coughs> at this point, at this point, this is unacceptable, and we want. Due to this, we are going to increase our patrols, uh, make sure we're visible in the area, and and answer uh, calls, uh, public safety calls as needed. So, thank you. Uh, any questions? We'll take at this point. General, how many uh, guards? Men are going to be there and will they be armed? The, uh, at this point, uh, the guardsmen that are employed will be based on mission requirements. Uh, the only mission we've received at this point is to relieve some law enforcement at the checkpoint. Law enforcement will still be in the lead at the information point, if you use the right terms here. Um, so, whatever that requirement is to help out there. And then uh, there'll be approximately another 100 on standby. Um, and then, as always, if needed, uh, we have guardsmen all around the state that we can call in if there is a requirement for them. But again, uh, about 100 that will be on a, a shorter notice to come in and help support law enforcement if required. And what was the number in addition to that 100? Well, our total strength in North Dakota National Guard is about 4,100. But how many will actually be at these checkpoints? Check so check uh, we'll coordinate that with the Highway Patrol. They will remain in the lead on the information point. Um, but if we can free up a couple uh, units, are you talking dozens office. or yes? Okay. Yeah, I think right armed? now it might be six to eight uh, per shift. Will they be armed? Uh, we'll <coughs> do that with the high patrol. But uh, right now they'll be uh, probably display the same uh, level of uh, protection as the high patrolmen they're working with. So that's a yes. Yes, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. the Where, where are they coming from? What units? Uh, 191 MPs. They're stationed in Bismarck, Mayville, and Fargo. And this is a highly trained unit uh, that has some law enforcement expertise, but they are not sworn peace officers in the state of North Dakota. And again, our role is to support law enforcement, not be in the lead. Sheriff, can you talk about the enhanced patrols and maybe the current camp too? what the complement's going to be, and, and how long all these folks are going to be in place? Well, we just, uh, well, they plan on being in place as long as the protest is, is continuing and uh, the precautions are necessary. Uh, we want to make sure that we have additional officers uh, down on, on the county road uh, in, in southern Morton County uh, to make sure we've had uh, several reports of individuals down there, like I mentioned before, of of them uh, being uh, harassed and actually stopped, even trying to get them stopped in their tractors and that type of thing as they're trying to do uh, their daily uh, work. And, and we just cannot have that uh, going on. Um, uh, we've had several reports of residents you know, uh, driving in and, and to their homes and people having them block the county roads and physically standing on the road and not, let, not letting residents, residents through. So we just got to make sure that we increase our our presence there, uh, so this doesn't uh, occur. Uh, sure. Uh, could you? Um, uh, there was another, uh, I guess, this morning uh, incident where uh, some individuals locked themselves to equipment down there early this morning. Uh, happened again uh, the other day. The last two times it's happened. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there have been no arrests made. Um, it's just been the law enforcement monitoring the situation. Uh, is that a matter of resources? So in other words, this decision today free you up to be able to go in and, and, and arrest people in those cases, or is that a, a strategy to just not engage the, the protesters when they, when they engage in that activity? Well, correct. We want to make sure that we have more manpower available to uh, to respond to these instances. Uh, we did have a report this morning that there were additional uh, protesters that were uh, uh, went into the private land and were uh, uh, on equipment. At this point, we had officers respond. Uh, to that situation. Everything that we're doing right now is being investigated and arrests will be made uh, when investigations are through or when it, it's feasible to do so. Why at this point do you turn it from a, you know, a stoppage point to an information point? Well, we want to make sure that everybody through uh, uh, that's going down on Highway 1806 can get where they're going with families and you know with uh, the holiday weekend and everything going on. Uh, so 
we want to open that up and we're had many conversations with tribal leaders uh, to try to keep the roadway open and that's been the whole thing about the, the traffic control point is uh, due to the traffic congestion and, and public safety and we're working with the tribal leaders Some of that video, uh, we were not aware uh, that the uh, construction activity was going to be started up uh, on Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we have to keep in mind uh, that the security personnel are there strictly for the protection of the construction workers. Uh, we have to also keep in mind that uh, people who have entered that property at that point are trespassing. Uh, they are on private property. They do not have uh, permission to be there. Uh, and so, you know, they are uh, not in a position to be, uh, you know, uh, saying that they are, uh, you know, in the wrong when they are told that they should leave the, the area. Um, unfortunately, um, that kind of confrontation is exactly what we would like to avoid. That is what we uh, would like our law enforcement to be able to manage in some way, uh, persuade people that this is not the proper way to protest, and, you know, really eliminate uh, that type of activity completely. What about the dogs? Did you talk to the security people about use of dogs like that? Well, the, the company, uh, as you know, has, you know, stopped work, left the premises. Right. And, uh, you know, currently has no plans to uh, you know, go back to work. Governor, I want to ask you a question. Is there any investigation as to the legalities of, of the construction team, you know, the security team that brought the vicious dogs uh, that, that, that attack, could have potentially attacked women and small children? They do have, uh, you know, property rights to defend property, but I don't know if that includes, you know, potential lethal force. So maybe that's a question for you or for the sheriff, whether or not those investigations are taking place, because that could have been lethal, it could have been disastrous, and for, for all sides involved, we need to, we, I want to ask you specifically, are you willing to meet with DAPL shareholders, executives, tribal shareholders and executives, and other leadership to possibly create some other solution to this? Because what's happening is a potential collision. That's what the buildup is, is, is that's going on. And I want to know, I'm interested in, in avoiding that. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, we are interested in avoiding that as well. And uh, I have been in communication uh, directly uh, with the tribal leadership and, and more often indirectly through uh, the people who are standing behind me, uh, continually trying to find ways uh, to allow peaceful protests to, play, to take place uh, wherever people want to uh, do that uh, and avoid, you know, any kind of violence or any kind of disruption. We've had good communications with the tribal leadership. Uh, unfortunately, as you know, uh, there are people uh, who are acting independently uh, of the main group, uh, and that is a problem. But ultimately, uh, yes, I'm also interested in keeping the communication lines open uh, with the company. Uh, they also uh, will be asked to not escalate the situation unnecessarily, and, and we have done that. Governor, a question on the cost of all this. And, uh, you're talking about now the, the guard the, uh, component, in addition to all of the law enforcement component to date. Uh, I, I imagine the tab is, is getting to be significant in the way of cost. Will, the, will the, you ask that there be some reimbursement uh, from the from the tribe for us, given the fact this is an unlawful protest? We will ultimately uh, ask people who are responsible for creating the extension uh, to reimburse the state uh, in the end. Uh, and of course, you know, attributing the expenses you know, to the right place is important. Uh, we, we only will ask those who are truly responsible uh, for you know, help with expenses at the end of the day. Would that include the pipeline company itself? Uh, it could. Um, you know, no one would be left off of that list. Uh, if we think that anyone has caused the state expense, we will be asking for reimbursement. 
You know, I want to ask you a question about your conversations earlier about um, sharing with us some of the conversations that went on in these negotiations. Um, is there a recognition that this is an unlawful protest? When you have core land that right now is occupied illegally by, uh, by some estimates, 4,000 people today, do they recognize that they are by that? Same thing with the situation with the dogs. I mean, that never would have happened if people hadn't decided to bust down barricades and go a half mile into private property. Uh, so that, again, is illegal activity. I mean, are they, do they acknowledge that this is an unlawful protest? Uh, I don't know if they acknowledge that. Um, it's uh, you kind of play the hand you're dealt. And, and right now we have uh, appointed by the seven council chiefs or chairmen and the Standing Rock chairman representatives that are from the camp. Uh, two of them have a close affiliation with Standing Rock. Uh, and we're looking for a way to end this people. Uh, I realize it's an awkward situation because uh, that camp uh, is poor property. Uh, if you want to put a fine point on it, right now they're camping without a permit. Uh, but we also have not heard from the Corps and, and so they've actually asked, I guess at this point, for those folks being uh, so from a negotiation standpoint uh, we think we have some peacemakers down there we're talking with them uh, my belief is they have influence over a, a good number of the folks down there uh, a couple days ago i talked about uh, i don't know how many of these agitators they are but it seems to be the same group that keeps popping up and we are working together to try to identify those folks um, in some cases, folks have been asked to leave the camp. Uh, but just to identify them so that they can either be marginalized down there or maybe sent home, or if they come up here, we can have a law enforcement solution ready to go uh, if something happens uh, like coming up Saturday. Do you guys have access to other states' National Guard if needed? Well, I can, uh, the, the easy answer is yes to the email. Uh, but uh, I don't see a requirement for regular National Guard members. Any idea how long these guardsmen will be on active duty? It, again, depends on the situation unfolds. Obviously, we're all waiting on any court decision tomorrow. Uh, we'll continue our negotiations with the folks from Standing Rock and the leaders within that camp. Uh, we're trying hard to find a, a peaceful resolution to this after the court decision. Uh, but we will be here as long as we're a question for Colonel Gerhardt. Um, now that you have been freed up at the checkpoints, what would you envision your officers being uh, able to do? Whether or not, will it be more arrests as a result of this decision, as an example? Well, our goal would be um, to be highly visible south of the checkpoint, uh, not only on Highway 106, Highway 6, but the main Morton County roads and assisting the sheriff. And if there are uh, criminal activities that are ongoing, we make arrests. Our goal would be to be there and be visible so people don't break the law, but ultimately if they do, we make arrests. It'll ultimately free up about eight officers every 12 hours cycle for our 12 hour shift right now. So I'll be able to free up eight officers and that'll be four patrol cars going up and down the road. Can you explain what the material has changed on the roadway when you still have to help the government? Well, one of the, there's a couple of enhancements that have been made. One of the biggest enhancements is the fact that we Sheriff Kirkmeyer, would you, um, I think we've had some different numbers floating around, so could you give us the exact number of arrests that we're talking about now from this? Uh, from the protests, it's yeah. been 37, 37 at this point, yes. Yeah. Okay. You issued a, a warrant for Joe Stein, have you found him anywhere? 
Uh, no, we, uh, those warrants are uh, misdemeanor warrants, uh, so they will be uh, uh, contained to, uh, to North Dakota. So if she comes back into the area, uh, they can be served at that point. If she, if she gets stopped for traffic, or animal flashing. Correct. Can you elaborate on the concerns that um, you mentioned you have reports of people who live in Morton County feeling unsafe or threatened? What, what are you talking about? Well, we've had, uh, you know, reports of, uh, in a lot of, a lot of folks in that area uh, call us with the information, but don't, don't want to make a, a formal complaint uh, because of the feel of retaliation. Uh, so that is also unacceptable at this point. Uh, you know, for the retaliation and then for to feel that way is, is not good. Uh, so we've had a vehicle report. Some of those examples are we've had a vehicle with out-of-state plates uh, playing chicken with local residents on a county gravel road. Uh, we've had a rancher go into his field that was stopped by a masked man on a county road who attempted to approach him uh, as he kept driving, and then uh, they took off. Uh, we've had a, a wife that uh, felt afraid she was leave, to leave uh, their ranch and, and travel to work. Uh, and a rancher noticed that a man be videotaping his farm while being on his property. Uh, uh, farmers and ranchers are fearful of damage to their fields and to their pasture land. Uh, and, and basically, you know, the residents down there that we get the feeling that they are they are tired uh, uh, and frustrated and want to be able to go uh, about their daily life activities without interruptions. Those are just uh, a few of them. The enhanced patrols in the Bismarck and Mandan area coincides with powwow. Can anybody speak to that and, and how the uh, patrols will be bumped up? Well, we just want to make sure that we have officers uh, uh, in the area and invisible for all the public. There is, there is a, a lot more uh, traffic, uh, a lot more people uh, coming to town to, for the celebration of the powwow, which is uh, perfectly fine. And this just uh, coincides uh, with the, the protest. But our main concern is that uh, the, the protest is uh, lawful and legal uh, you know, from this point on. And we don't have incidences where uh, people are trespassing on private land or going and uh, crawling on equipment or vandalizing. Uh, so we just want to make sure that uh, everybody who comes, uh, visitors, uh, Morton County residents, uh, people from you know, Burley County residents, everybody who comes in the area uh, has a very safe weekend. Sir, uh, can you uh, speak to how the public safety is affected when you are sending a motorist at 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning around a dark, unlit gravel, uh, unmarked street floor. People who have made trips into the hospital to uh, take residents in uh, to be treated, and then they were sent on a detour that took up to uh, an hour and a half longer uh, for them to go around after they've already uh, been uh, in a lake and, and working hard all day long. And how, how is that public safety when you're sending them? Out, but there's no cell phone service, there's no gas stations, there's very little traffic, and there's no way for them to get help if there's an emergency. Do you like to have a question on the, about the people who are, you know, I don't know if there's any instances, any ambulances, anything of that nature can all go through uh, the checkpoint that hasn't been an issue. Yes, but when a so. private resident takes a person to the hospital, uh, as I did, uh, and I was forced to go at 3 o'clock in the morning around that detour. I then got lost because it's unmarked. And it, uh, I almost fell asleep while I was driving. And I could not uh, get a signal or anything. The, uh, I, the, the biggest point of that is that we want to make sure that uh, the traffic on 1806 uh, was safe in, in those circumstances. And I don't know, you know what took place at the, at the, the checkpoint or what the situation was. Uh, but the officers there are, you know, use common sense and uh, can deal with the situation. That's well, I was told it was because I might stop and uh, be uh, taking a, a back by the side of a buffalo on the side of the road. It was the excuse that uh, one of your officers gave me as to why I should not be able to go down because I might be distracted while I was driving by the buffalo on the side of the road. Well, I can't answer that. I wasn't there at the time. So well, sir, and uh, you know now now that you are going to change this to a traffic thing, uh, 
Are you going to compensate people for the time and gas that they uh, spent going around? No. Governor, uh, your emergency declaration, that does allow you to pursue federal funds or does not? To help pay the cost of this additional uh, at, at this point, uh, you know, we have not asked for a uh, federal emergency declaration. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you speak to when the last time uh, the National Guard was mobilized for, for health and security or traffic control that wasn't related to a natural disaster like a flood or any of them the last time acting like this? Yeah, there was a uh, guard were activated after 9-11 for security at the airports along the northern border. Uh, if you go way back in time, there was Zip the Zap. And uh, <laughs> there was another event in the 70s where the guard was called out under similar circumstances to the general public. The Zip the Zap, that was in the 70s as well. Right? <laughs> because yeah. Right before my time. 1969. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think at this point, uh, you know, uh, thank you very, very much for attending.